Hello guys, my name is Vijay. I am working as Senior Lead Engineer in Episero. In this session, let us see part 4 of Data View 2.0 interview questions. So let's go ahead. So how to print dollar in the output? So uh, let's see this uh, demo on the same. Now, uh, for example, if, if your input is uh, this one, so when you, when you try to print this right or when you work this one right it will it will work uh, without any issues but for example if you want to copy if you want to uh, map this 15 dollars uh, from the data view script right it will throw an error saying that unable to resolve reference of dollar so in this case what you can do you can add a uh, escape character that is uh, forward slash so in this case it will work so this is uh, this is all about the very first question so you, you have to uh, escape when you work with the dollars right within the data view script uh, you have to escape it with uh, forward slash how to convert json string to json so let's say this is a payload where we have two uh, keys and the value is json but it is in string so how to convert this to a uh, proper JSON we'll see in the demo so I created a simple application uh, like this so we are not going to discuss about this application uh, but let me send a request to this and let me try to store some uh, key value pair okay so this is the payload and the key will be the correlation ID uh, which I'll be uh, using uh, to store the key value pair in the object store okay now let me send the request so we got a successful response now when I use the retrieve uh, operation right I mean if I send a request to this particular HTTP listener I should be able to get the the data that I have stored in the object store so if I click on send right uh, you see this is the payload and the value is is a JSON but it, it is in the string format so let me copy this uh, yeah so this is the payload now let's let's try to convert this particular part into a proper JSON so because the input is a JSON right uh, payload map object so we'll take the key as is so key will be key and value is a string as of now okay now we have to use a function called as read in order to read a string which is all which is uh, which is in another format so now this is uh, this is actually a JSON payload which is in string format okay so let's use a read function and we'll pass the string value that is nothing but the value here so value comma the format that you you would like to convert it to json now you see we were able to uh, convert this particular payload into a proper json so where the key is this one and the value is this which is again having two key value pairs okay so you have to use the read function let's go ahead with the next question how to convert date time to specific time zone so this is again a very simple one now when you when you use now function right within uh, data view script uh, it it locks the current date time stamp but it all depends upon where your uh, new application or this particular data view script is running okay now for example uh, if you want to convert to some other time zone right you have to use this operator and the time zone so when I did not use this right let's let's try to compare this so let me take uh, let me take a snap of this output okay so it is like 1720 now let me try to convert it to uh, IST time zone okay now you see there is some change date is same but here it is like 20 to 50 that is 1050 p.m. okay so this is how you can convert to a different time zone 
let me use uh, something like EST okay or PST you can use whatever okay this way you can uh, convert from one time zone to another time zone uh, let's go ahead with the next question how many types of targets can be created in transform message so we all will be uh, working with the transform message right so from this transform message how many targets you can create so by default uh, when you when you drag and drop a transform message right by default the target will be pointing to payload okay this is the default target now you can expand you can add few more targets as well if you see here in the drop down you can add attributes and variable as well but uh, attributes you can add only one uh, let me click on add new target and you can add variable let's say abc so like this you can add n number of variables okay so but the the kinds of uh, targets are three one is payload the other is attributes uh, the other category is variable so that is what I have mentioned here let's go ahead ne with next question print the most repetitive character in a string so let's go to the data view playground now yeah So this is the this is the uh, string. So let's try to find out the repetitive character, the most repetitive character in this string. Okay. So for this, uh, let's try to split it. Okay. So we got an array. Now what shall we, what we can do? Um, so we can use uh, group by and let's let's group by uh, based on the item or the entry okay now you see uh, by by looking at this particular current output right we can understand okay this is the this should be the output of this uh, this particular query okay now uh, what we can do let's try to fetch the values only let's ignore the keys okay and let's uh, try to fetch the values itself so I'll be using values of okay now what we can do we can uh, shuffle or we can sort this array based upon the size of each and every item <coughs> so I'll be using size of function size of item okay now whatever is having very small size will be uh, I mean will be there in the initial indexes initial positions and <clears throat> whatever is having the large size will be at the last index okay now uh, what we can do we can simply fetch the the last index value okay so let me put minus one here so we got this and you can use uh, of zero right because every cat is same so uh, I have fetched the very first character uh, within the sorted array okay so of zero so this is the most uh, repeated character so what I will do let me mock it I'll keep uh, two more O's so now you see uh, O is repeating four times that is why uh, we got O as the most repetitive character okay let's go ahead with the next question how to check if the if the given string is a palindrome now what is palindrome so palindrome in the sense um, if you reverse a, a particular string right and if there is no difference okay then we call uh, that as a palindrome let me for the time being uh, mm, I'll take this one level level now in order to use a function called as reverse right let's uh, we have to import strings module so let's let's try to capture the value or the string payload dot message now um, let's reverse this okay 
so okay. there there is no difference actually so uh, if of uh, payload dot message uh, is equal to reverse of the message then it's a palindrome okay so let me uh, frame it as palindrome else not a palindrome okay so level is a palindrome that's why we we got this as output now i'll type something else uh, like uh, m a d a m madam okay uh, okay yeah so why there is a difference here because it it also checks the um uh, the case as well it's case sensitive basically so if i if i change this to small m right now it will output it as a palindrome okay I'll do um, I'll put some string so this is not a palindrome because when you reverse it right it is starting with O uh, I mean so the original string and the reverse string is not equal so that's why it is not a palindrome so this is how you can write uh, DW script for to check if a uh, string is a palindrome or not how to access attribute in XML payload so let me copy the payload uh, which I have here so this is an XML okay now we don't require this let me remove that and yeah so let's try to access these uh, attributes so attribute is nothing but the extra information about a xml tag <coughs> okay so payload dot messages dot note now when you uh, when you type this uh, expression right payload dot message messages dot note you could see only the very first one got printed now how to print this one as well i mean the corresponding output okay so um you have to put star here so that whatever are the nodes okay it, it will print all the details with this uh, tag okay now i have to access id so if i put dot id uh, so you see we got it as a null why because you have to use at the rate okay so now you see uh, we got these two values one is uh, 501 and 502 so this is how you can access a particular attribute within XML by using at the rate uh, so what is the difference between double equal to and uh, identical equal to payload dot number so it has printed 30 now for example if I if I keep it as a uh, double equal to uh, 30 so it has given the output as false why because if you keep double equal to it will also check the the data type it will compare the data types as well of the left operand and the right operand here we are comparing uh, 30 number with string 30 that's why we, we see false in the output now uh, let me keep uh, identical equal to uh, so this way right uh, now you see it it is only comparing the data not the data type so that's why you could see true in the output okay so this is uh, the difference that you need to know so find the average of an array of numbers so let me take a random array now uh, we have a function like average and you have to pass an array here so it has given the average actually okay but if, if the interviewer asks you to uh, do it in a different way right uh, without using a average function so what you can do you can uh, first you can submit uh, some the entries within the array so this is the array now uh, you have to divide with the uh, total uh, total number of uh, entries right so size of payload okay so uh, this will be 10 and this is the sum of these elements okay so 
this way also we got the average so you can use either this or this one both are fine now the last question for the session is that uh, how to check the pay payload type okay yeah you see uh, by using the type of function we can understand what kind of uh, what is the type of the input so here the input is string because it is enclosed within double quotes it is an array so that's why you see uh, this uh, this as array this is number and you see it is like true it is a boolean now if i enclose the same within double quotes right it's not a boolean it is again a string okay that's why it got changed to string so let me revert that i'll put false again it's a boolean now type of uh, this is an object right so that's why uh, we see object in the output um, i'll try to come up with some more questions uh, in my next uh, series of uh, data entry questions thank you so much